Here we are at the final day for the Midsummer Streamathon, sponsored by Art Curious by MNW. And I have thoroughly enjoyed participating with this group of people um, to do this Streamathon for a solid six days. Today is the final day, and I kind of went rogue with my. <laughs> with my creation for today. So I do use some of the things that we have done in the first five days, but I also add something else in that I hope you find of interest. So my name is Peg and I call my channel 2 Crows Mix Media. So I am starting with toilet paper. And, you know, we talk about making paper. Um, that was one of the prompts for the week. So I am going to use this toilet paper to make some paper mache. And I am going to create with that paper mache. I have a balloon. I'm going to blow the balloon up and try to get it as round as I possibly can. And I think that's probably good right there. So I'll tie that off. And I want to be able to hold on to that. So I think I'll put some tape there at the bottom where that balloon is tied and give myself something to kind of hold on to. And I thought about, you know, setting it in that butter tub, but I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to put that butter tub aside. We'll tape my balloon down. We'll get out my glue and water mixture and start to coat that balloon. And as I put that glue and water on, I'm going to add a sheet of toilet paper. And I have taken, this is a very inexpensive roll of toilet paper. This is the leftover of the COVID-19 toilet paper. My, you know, they were down on the shelves. They were down to nothing but the stuff that you wouldn't buy normally. And we had a case of this paper that we had left over from the COVID-19, what did they call it, when they sheltered us in place. And I am using that in my shop, <laughs> not in my house. So it is single-ply toilet paper, inexpensive, cheap, and I am creating like a paper mache out of it. So we will continue to go round and round the balloon until we get that balloon completely covered. And then I am going to hang that balloon upside down with a clip off of a shelf for that to dry overnight. And I just want to make sure that I get all the way around and there's no pink of the balloon showing through. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I have it fairly coated with the, I, well I think completely coated with the toilet paper and now I want to pull out some um, Mod Podge hard coat. I think this just reinforces it a little bit more and I'm going to put a coat of that Mod Podge hard coat over the entire piece. So what we're going for is a complete circle of toilet paper around this balloon or a dome or, or a orb, if you will. And once I get that Mod Podge, Mod Podge hard coat on, I will put it off to the side to dry. Now, what you see in the upper left-hand side of my screen right now is the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store little box of Jenga wood pieces. I've pulled those out and I am gluing two of them together end by end until I have a set of six. So we'll take 12 Jenga pieces glue two together until you have six little wood frames, if you will, or the substrate that we're going to use to create, create a frame. 
So stick with me. This will make sense eventually. So I'm hot gluing those together. And I'm trying to get as much as that glue off the side because you know when you hot glue and that glue is hot and you press something together, it kind of seeps out. And I'm trying to rub that off and get that gluey mess off of each of these pieces so that I have a very clean piece of wood. So one of the one of the prompts was to use wood to do a wood craft. So here we are with um, making paper, the paper mache, and a wood craft. So we are adding those two. And now I'm going to glue these together to create a frame. So you're, I'm just Ling them together. So I'm putting the uh, two together like an L. That makes sense. I don't have it sitting there so that you can see it like an L. So, And now uh, I'm going to let those dry and then we'll put them together. You have now a long end and a short end because that L, when you glued that together, you increase the size or the length of that one side. So now you want to hot glue long side to short side, long side to short side. I hope I'm making sense, but I think you can probably see it here um, when I do it. And then what you're left with is a stand that we can utilize for our paper mache moon. So just remember long to short, long to short. And I did two sizes. I did one very small one with just one little piece of Jenga, and then I wanted it bigger, so I used two of the Jenga pieces glued together to create my second one. And I think this, of all things, was the hardest thing for me to figure out, was how to glue this together to create this stand. But at the end, it became very evident you were doing taking the short end and attaching it to the long end and that way everything is even. So I hope that makes sense. And what you have left is the little stand that looks like so. My glue isn't sticking right now so we'll get that worked through. I think I'm trying to move too fast. See, it keeps coming apart on me. And I'm not allowing the glue to set before I put the strain on it to glue it together. And it's when I put that strain on it, to get it to piece together because the glue isn't set on one side it is not holding. So I have to be patient, wait for that glue to dry, and then put the final piece of glue in. So I think you understand what I'm doing here. I hope you understand what I'm doing here. And there you have your finished, your finished piece. So this is going to create this little stand that we're going to set that paper mache in. So we'll set those aside and we'll get our little orb back out and see how it did overnight. So I let this dry overnight and I can see where I'm a light on the toilet paper. 
You can see where the pink balloon is showing through, like right here. So I need to reinforce that. And we'll do that with a couple of sheets of toilet paper and we'll just glue it on. I'm not getting the hard coat back out. I'm just uh, working with the regular glue and water right now. And I think when I created this, I think I allowed this balloon to dry overnight two times. So I have allowed it to dry overnight now and I am patching it where I had the weak spots and then I'll allow that to dry overnight again and come back and if I have to patch again then we'll have a third night. But I, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, when I did this, I think we just had two nights here. Alright, so now that that is fully dry, I have some metallic silver acrylic paint and I am going to paint my moon that italics, metallic silver. And you can see how it'll set in that stand. I'm using that sand to kind of hold it while I, while I paint. And we'll just get a good coat of that metallic silver paint on there. And the beauty of doing it like this, you know how the moon has all these craters and different things that are visible. And in creating this with the tissue paper like we are, and having that tissue paper not be perfect on the balloon, we're getting all of that texture. And I want to go over it first with the metallic silver and then I also have a pearl essent color just a uh, white pearl metallic pearl that I want to use on this as well and there's that white metallic pearl or the metallic pearl I don't I don't think white is is in the vocabulary for that it is just a metallic pearl paint and as I go over that, anywhere there was texture, as I brush over it, you'll see a lot of that metallic silver peeking out from underneath this, this uh, metallic pearl. So it actually is creating a very beautiful um, little moon. So we'll let that dry. And then come back. I have some silver ink. And I'm just going over and picking up some of that texture. And that's very um, subdued. And now I have watering can, which is a deeper gray. And I'm coming back over the texture with that watering can. And you can see how it's picking up all of those, the, all of that texture in that tissue paper. So now that we have that complete and everything is good and dry, I'm going to poke a hole in my balloon. And pull that balloon out. I'm cutting the hole a little bit wider. 
it worked. It absolutely worked for what I used it for. But if I were doing it over again, I would make that opening at the bottom a little bit smaller than, than I'm showing here. So keep that in mind if you're going to do this. So now I have my moon. And I want to display that, but I've decided that I'd like to light it up. So I've pulled out some string lights. And I'm going to put those string lights inside this moon. And I wanted to show you these string lights as I unwrap them so you can see what I'm using. So I'm going to set them aside for right now and come back to my stand. And because I have so much texture on the moon and because where those jingas were glued together with the hot glue, there are some areas of that piece that has that kind of gluey mess that I can't get sanded off. So I thought, why not just add a little bit of texture to the stand and make this a little more interesting. So I have my texture paste out and I'm just using my fingers to apply some texture. I'll let that dry. I'm going to make sure that my lights will light up. And I thought you know, it's funny how, how you think things through and think that you have a great idea. I was going to masking tape my lights inside so they would show. And as you can see, you can see <laughs> where the masking tape is. So I'm going to pull all of those back out and get rid of the masking tape. And we'll put those back up in there and figure out a way to get those to really truly light this thing up without uh, the masking tape. So I'm just going to jumble them up in there and, and that looks much, much better. So let's finish off the stand. And to finish off the stand, I want to paint it black. And I think it's probably dry by now. And I'll set that texture paste aside and pull out my black acrylic paint. And we will coat this with a good coat of black acrylic and allow that to dry. And while I'm doing this, I'll take a moment and talk about the Streamathon just a little bit. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope that you have set in on some live streams and have watched some of the videos of some of the other people over the past six days. And if you have enjoyed the content that I have brought to you, I truly hope that you will hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. And moving forward, we'll, we'll know, hit that notification bell and you'll know when I upload videos. I normally upload videos once a week on Sundays usually. And we'll be doing that until the first of the year. And at the first of the year, I will be free to do nothing but what I want to do because I will be fully retired from my corporate job. So here is my finished product. That moon looked great. The first picture you saw was sitting on the covered uh, in the covered part of my deck. This is just in my um, studio. But once again, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've appreciated all the hard work that was put forth by um, 
some of the people, Nancy and Raul and, and Miriam, who put this together. And I, again, thank you very much for watching my videos. This is Peg, two old crows. Bye for now.